Welcome everybody to our session today on monitoring medical devices, an introduction. I am Gary Freeman and I have over 30 years experience in the pharmaceutical and medical device industry. Medical devices became regulated much later than drugs, but the act of monitoring is very similar and often follows issues that were learned from the drug industry. We often read publications or go to uh, workshops uh, currently offered by the device division of the FDA, and we hear constantly how we should be looking at warning letters that have been issued to the drug people so that we can learn from those and that we don't do the same mistakes. Many of these are based on inadequate monitoring oftentimes not following the protocol, sometimes not having adequate documentation, and often the monitoring visit reports, something that's not clear, corrective action, preventive action. Does the monitor notice issues? I believe that we notice more issues than we document. The documentation is the critical piece here. We need to make sure we're documenting what we do. Most of the guidance documents that have been issued by the FDA in the last five years cover both the drug and the device regulations. And most of them actually affect the investigator and how we monitor the studies for compliance to the regulations. FDA has repeatedly stated that if the studies were better monitored, the investigator would not have as many deficiencies. This is certainly true on investigator-initiated studies where the investigator is serving as the investigator and the sponsor. And we're seeing a number of these in the device industry cropping up. We're going to look today at the basic principles that are embraced by monitoring in this course. Let's take a look at our learning objectives for today. Our learning objectives are many. The first is to talk about the regulatory purpose for why we monitor these device studies. Why do we spend this money if we choose wisely and have good, uh, good investigators. We've selected the best in the field. Why do we need to go out and supervise them? We're going to talk about the basic terms and the types of monitoring visits that we conduct and how we document them. And keep in mind, if it's not documented, it didn't happen. So our visits are for naught if we don't do an accurate job of writing them up. If there is an FDA inspection, they will view all monitoring visit reports for that site. That's where they get their impression of how are we handling our trial. Do we care about the subjects? Are we looking out for safety of subjects? Are we looking for the quality of the data? Are we really reviewing the source records against the case report forms, whether it be on paper or electronic? We're also going to look at the roles and responsibilities then of the CRA, often called a monitor, for the various types of visits. What are we expected to do? We'll talk about the meaning of the protocol, compliance. Our monitoring visit report is going to say, have we checked for protocol compliance? When we check that question, yes, what do we mean? What did we look at? And similarly, for regulatory compliance, what is it? FDA expects that we have compliance both with the protocol and with the regulatory requirements. And lastly, we're going to recognize the rationale behind that documentation of monitoring, which includes identifying the issues, identifying corrective action that was taken, as well as preventive action if it was needed, and how we evaluated the effectiveness of our solution, both at the site level and at the sponsor level because issues can come up at the sites for which the monitor is expected to facilitate and also within the sponsor obligation, in which case the monitor would be a, a, a important a piece of that puzzle as well, and often the communicator of the issue back and forth from the site to the sponsor and vice versa. <laughs> 